Frankie, you're here at Kapow Comic Convention today. What have you been doing here? Yeah, I've been trying to avoid people, largely. Pure. Uh, I came here yesterday, and it was like, bizarrely, because I'm fucking not really at all famous, but I guess I've got a big red beard, so people can recognise me. So it's just like a fucking zombie movie of people who perhaps don't even really like you, coming out of your autograph. <laughs> but it was all right. I went away for a nap at the end of it, and uh, I felt a lot better today. Ah, it's, it seems really amazing. It's an amazing uh, venue for it. It's nice and airy and not kind of, you know, not kind of cramped at all when there's so many people here. It's great. And you did a panel today, haven't you, as well? And it was supposed to be, or it's down for 45 minutes, and it ended up being an hour and 15 to a packed room. Yeah, I mean, we just kept fucking talking because we didn't know how long we were supposed to do. That was what happened there. Uh, and uh, there was a lot of confused rambling from me about... Um, uh, what was I talking about? Acid, largely. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it. I don't know what they took away from it. Hopefully they <laughs> latched onto the few sentences that made sense and and uh, they're, they're okay now. Now, Lou, you know you love your comics, don't you? I mean, how did you get into them in the first place? Uh, sort of different ways. I mean, I read kind of old British comics. Um, um, I read, like, you know, the ones you would have as a kid, the Victor and all that stuff. But I, I, old, I did read American comics when I was a little kid. I wasn't that into them. I liked The Silver Surfer. Um, <laughs> I totally had my mind blown by this comic when I was a kid. It was like, I think it's a Jack Kirby comic with Metron, but as a little little kid, like five or six or so, I think it's like fucking Metron comes up to. There's this like galactic fucking prison for supervillains where they're all tied to asteroids. Have you ever seen this? They're all like um, giant giant versions of whoever's imprisoned in the asteroid prison thing are sort of strapped in agony like Promethean kind of agony to these rocks and that thing is their prison I think and they can sort of escape out of it and stuff and as a kid not even really knowing that the earth was round like you know looking at this just absolutely <laughs> seemed absolutely mental yeah so I've always had a thing for them so as a as, as you've gone through the years and grown up though what are the ones that particularly have kept you know a place in your heart you know what it's all of them I mean, I'll read anything and I'll take what there is good out of it. There's something about uh, images and uh, words together that I really love. And so, like, I mean, I read my kids. Like, I read the comics and then I read them to my kids as a kind of edited version. So there's two edited versions, one for the weird kid and one for the older kid. And uh, I read them that whole Annihilation Conquest thing recently. Do you know that? Yeah. So it's like that fucking... Uh, What's he called? Rocket Raccoon and uh, the the Groot, the Stickman and all that stuff. And on some levels, that's not a very good comic, <laughs> you know. But on, on a lot of levels, it's kind of great as well that a f fucking raccoon is firing about space and as part of some, uh, uh, you know, intergalactic fucking chaos uh, defeating uh, agency. And yeah, I, I I really enjoyed that. Pretty much whatever I've just read, I've I've really enjoyed. And at the same time, you do recognise sometimes it's you know things are <laughs> there are a lot of things that aren't very good, but uh, there's also a lot of great things. How are your kids responding to the comics? Are they loving them like you did as a kid? My boy really loves the comics. He's four, um, but my daughter less so. There's just not enough good female characters in comics. So you see, you find a lot of wee girls get quite into Fantastic Four, mm. and you know because like, you've got two female characters in it kind of thing. But there's just not enough comics. Uh, for girls and the ones that there are are just a wee bit, you know, super girl or whatever. It's just a bit fucking stereotyped, and it's a bit of a male view of of what a girl superhero would be. And you know, there's a real, surely there's a real gap there for someone to do strong female characters and more just more interesting, varied stories with female characters. It's fine, hard to find stuff for her. Mm. Do you think is that something you'd maybe think of doing then, writing stories for her? No, I th you know, you should have female writers doing mm. that, really. I mean, it's just that thing of... That's it in every industry, isn't it? That You know, it's, 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 they're all too male-dominated. And comedy as well, do you know what I mean? People talk about, why is it difficult for female comedians? Well, one of the reasons is that male comedians are fucking cunts to them. Do you know what I mean? It's pretty hard to be a female comedian and travel around a different dressing room every weekend because, you know... It's like being in, you know, a, f a football team's locker room. Do you know what I mean? It's not. It's not actually that encouraging.